breaking news alert. I direct the chief clerk to notify the Secretary of State that House District 23 is vacant. That formal language, breaking news, history made in Salem, as Oregon Representative Mike Neerman becomes the first legislator ever expelled from a seat six months after he's caught on camera letting armed protesters into the Capitol building. Welcome to Queen 6 News at 10 o'clock. I'm Dan Tilkin. In the height of the pandemic and just six weeks before the insurrection in D.C., armed rioters breached the state capitol and attacked police with bear spray. Eleven people, including Neerman, now face criminal charges. For months, Mike Neerman has been under scrutiny for his actions on that day. And tonight, every House member, Democrat and Republican, voted to kick him out. And while many of us were working across the aisle to deliver on relief for Oregonians who were who were most impacted by the pandemic and wildfires, Representative Neerman was planning and coordinating an attack on our Capitol. It's okay to disagree, but to demand that you were right and to try to achieve your righteousness through violence has no place in this state, in this country, and definitely not in this body. Neerman, before the vote, got one last chance to address lawmakers. Now you're considering expelling a member for the first time in history because he thinks that people should have access to their capital, especially during session. I think that the citizens of Oregon should be able to instruct their representatives. I think people from interest groups and industries should be able to apply to the legislature for redress of grievances in person. Plenty of people took their grievances to the Capitol tonight. They protested outside the building. Our Jenny Young was there with them. Dan, so about 50 or 60 people gathered outside the building, uh, support, supporters of Mike Neerman, and they were frustrated. They stood mainly at the parking garage as lawmakers uh, exited, drove out of the building tonight. They yelled their frustrations. Listen to this. All right, one of those protesters told me he expected the resolution to pass tonight, but hopes Neerman's political career isn't over. It wasn't a surprise or anything. Um, like I said, I didn't come out here really intending to change anything. Mostly I wanted to let Mike know that he has support. If he decides to run for governor, I'll be his campaign manager. I think he's got plenty of votes here tonight. Yeah, you could definitely hear them uh, yelling. They would yell shame, shame as lawmakers left that building. But moments after the vote, I talked to Representative Andrea Salinas uh, on the phone about what she, what it was like being on the House floor tonight. I want you to hear this. It was historic, but it was also, it was really quite um, emotional and painful and um, heavy. You know, nobody wants to see this happen. I feel like the weight of the polarization, I think, of um, different views is really coming to uh, it's coming to a pinnacle right now. And and this is just um, it, this is kind of it's culminating and showing us what what happens when we can't work things out through the rule of law. Now that vote 59 to 1, every House member voting to expel Neerman, except, of course, for Mike Neerman himself. Now, I did talk with Salinas about what is next for that seat. We're breaking that down. We'll have that for you live on Coin 6 News at 11. Reporting live tonight in Salem, Jenny Young, Coin 6 News.